So the general pathway is that you finish medical school, then you do three to six years of residency, and then you treat patients, and that's it. What about people that don't choose that pathway? Do you have to finish residency if you went to medical school? Well, the answer is no. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Shaw, and I make videos on my journey as a rural family medicine resident, so stay tuned. All right, so one of the most memorable things that one of my mentors ever told me is that you may not realize it right now, but an MD or DO is a hub degree, and you there are a lot more options available to you once you have it. And you don't really have to limit yourself just to pursuing residency. So for a variety of reasons, you may have people that choose to not pursue residency after medical school or didn't get through the match and therefore are unable to complete residency or have completed residency but no longer wish to practice medicine because they did residency and it's not something that they really want to pursue the rest of their life doing. But that's okay, there are many options. In this video, I'm gonna be covering the options that you have available to you if you finish medical school but you did not start or finish residency. So there's actually a lot of different things that you can do. And I know this because, you know, I went one year without being matched and, you know, I was looking into different alternatives because you know what, those bills still have to be paid. You know, for people like that have financial need or, you know, that just want to move on with their life, I looked into it and here are some things that I found. So the first thing that you could do is you could be a medical liaison. So a lot of these drug reps or um, other companies or even media companies, they have a medical person that is considered to be a liaison and that provides them with advice that's related to medical or healthcare related items. So that's something that you can pursue. You can type in medical liaison and it is a very, very fulfilling job that you can have and it spans a lot of different career paths. So that's definitely something, one thing to consider. Another common thing that people do is you could become a medical writer or editor. So there you have a lot of healthcare publications or you have healthcare journals or just websites that require a medical writer. And you can even do that as someone that's involved with um, insurance or there's just a lot of different areas that require medical writers to write pieces that are based you know in medicine and having an MD or a DO um, really helps you in pursuing those options because you know you have the medical background you don't necessarily have to be practicing clinically in order to be a medical writer you have the knowledge necessary to do that job well so that's another option that you can look into the third thing is becoming a healthcare consultant. So if you have your doctorate in medicine, what you can do is that you can go into healthcare consulting. And this is something that you can do part of a device company, part of like an electronic medical record company. I knew someone that was a healthcare consultant for Epic and what they did was they went to different hospitals and were the point person for Epic. And if they had any questions on how to use it, or if any of the residents or anybody had questions on how to use Epic effectively, they were the point person. So it's you know an option that's available to a lot of people who have doctorates but may not have the clinical experience. A common field that people that don't pursue residency opt to go into is research. There are two main types of research. There you have basic research and you have clinical research. So clinical research is allows you to primarily work with patients and that's the research um, area that I have more experience in and I think that it's what I personally enjoy but you know a lot of people do both types and you can run clinical trials and it's very fulfilling and you're still working with patients in just in a different capacity so it's great and you know you can like work your way up and then pursue a PhD should you wish to but it's absolutely not necessary to do that and you can do it just having your MD or DO so that's a fantastic other option another one is education. So education is fantastic and it's another area that a lot of people end up pursuing. You can work for those big giant um, medical exam companies like Kaplan or DIT or you know they have a whole bunch of different ones or the USMLE. There's a, just a lot of those medical education companies out there and you know people can opt to work for for one of them because they do still have they've passed all their boards and they have the information necessary and they can teach it and help other people prepare for their boards exam. So it's definitely still a very fulfilling option and also if you let's say want to go to an offshore school you can 
can apply to teach at one, as a professor if you have experience in a particular field. So that's another option that you can consider. And yeah, it's a reasonable option. The next one is some places I know in Canada, because I personally know several people who have done this, it's known as a telemedicine assistant. So typically what they do as a telemedicine assistant is they work underneath the supervision of a physician and this person is responsible for seeing patients and working with patients and taking, um, and just basically doing all the things that you would as a physician and you get paid for it, but you still require oversight from an, like the actual physician from the board certified physician I should say so that's a reasonable option you're still seeing you're still seeing patients and you're still doing your job the pay is perhaps it really varies depending on where you go and it's probably not as much as you would make as a full-fledged physician but it's definitely something that you can choose to pursue to help pay the bills in the meantime while you're retrying to apply to residency so that's another option so those were six plenty of options that you have available to you the world is at your disposal you don't even have to do anything in medicine you can choose to do something completely different but you know what it's not over and if you are unable to pursue residency or unwilling to pursue residency, you have a lot of options available to you. So if you're interested in that, if you're interested in learning how to optimize your application for next year, click down below on one of my other videos. All right, I hope that was helpful and you guys enjoy this. See you in the next one. Bye.